How's it going Star Seekers? My name's Luke and welcome back to the channel where today we're going to be taking a look at a game called Cataclysm Shards of the Four. It's a roguelike deck builder with RPG elements and it sees you taking on the role of a dark wizard who after meddling with spells far above his capabilities has unwittingly unleashed the four horsemen of the apocalypse upon the world. Now I played quite a lot of roguelike card games last year and there were plenty of great ones to choose from, but how does Cataclysm compare and should you be spending your time and money on it? In this review I hope to answer that question, so hit that like button, subscribe if you enjoy my content and want to see more, and let's get into it. So Cataclysm released earlier this year to mix reviews on Steam and this port brings its latest version to the Switch on the 13th of August where it's going to be available for £11.99 on the UK eShop and $14.99 on the US eShop. A lot of the Steam reviews criticised the game for its gameplay mechanics being a little simple, some elements being poorly balanced and a few visual bugs amongst other things, but quite frankly I wouldn't let those deter you because after spending several hours with the game I think that some of those reviews were a little overzealous with the criticisms. Now Cataclysm's story is your typical fantasy scenario. You play as a wizard who's been messing about with magics way above his pay grade and you basically screwed up, release the four horsemen on the world and now you've got to fix it. Very little is actually mentioned about this story though as you play through the game and it's really just there to justify the existence of the game's main bosses. Now upon first starting Cataclysm, you drop straight into the game without going through any sort of main menu and this first area introduces you to the core gameplay mechanics. You gain a few different cards and items, learn to build a deck and get to fight your way through a few simple card battles, but dying in this area just resets you outside of fights so you can try them again. Once you've beaten the tutorial area you then get into the real game and as with all good roguelikes, level layouts are procedurally generated alongside the enemies that you face and the items that you find. Now the core gameplay loop in Cataclysm goes something like this. You work your way through the level collecting items and facing off against sets of static enemies who bar your way. Defeating them in battle rewards you with new cards and allows you to progress onwards, while defeat results in you returning to the start of a newly generated level and you also lose a few of your cards to the graveyard which you'll be able to retrieve in later battles. Hidden somewhere within the level you'll also find a golden key which opens the golden door leading to the exit pole, but in order to pass through it you first have to defeat all enemies in the level at which point a big nasty will appear and chase you out of it. Now I believe these big nasties are supposed to be the horsemen, or at least the underlings, and after gaining enough power to defeat them you'll be rewarded with a valuable card and another more powerful demon will then replace them. Between levels you return to the tavern where you can accept missions to find items or kill enemies or trade cards and tokens for other cards or items and each time you defeat a boss more powerful enemies will appear in levels but you'll also gain access to more powerful cards and additional quests in the tavern. Now when it comes to the actual card battling mechanics, things are kept rather simple in comparison to some card games I've played and they're usually over after about 2-3 to three turns. Unlike most card games which operate on a mana based system, Cataclysm also does things a little differently and instead you have two resources, those being these yellow runes and blue orbs seen in the bottom right corner. Now your spell cards only have rune costs, but summoning minions into play costs both runes and orbs, with more powerful cards requiring more resources. As you work your way through the game, you're able to permanently increase both your yellow runes and blue orbs, and this allows you to build more powerful decks to combat increasingly more powerful enemies, and additional card properties are slowly introduced which does add a little more complexity to the game, but overall things are still kept pretty simple. Now you start each battle by drawing 4 cards and discarding any that you don't like and then it's down to you to make the first move and play your first cards. Each turn sees you summoning minions and attacking with them or casting spells and the objective is to simply kill all of the enemies by reducing the health to zero. Now this is made a little trickier by the fact that both minions and monsters will perform a counter attack the first time that they're attacked, so you really need to focus on the attack and health stats of cards to ensure that you've got minions to defend you against monster attacks come their turn, as a single hit from an enemy and it's game over. 
I did find that in the majority of battles I only needed to put out minions with more HP than the enemies to win, but I still needed to think strategically about the order in which I summoned and attacked with them. Now after playing several hours of Cataclysm, I do understand where people were coming from when they said gameplay is a little simple. In comparison to a lot of collectible card games I've played, it is, but I don't feel like every card game has to have a complex set of rules and mechanics for you to learn. Cataclysm works really well as an entry level card battle game, and I'm not quite sure what people were talking about when they said balance issues, as I had no problems progressing through the game, and I never got stuck or felt underpowered. Now alongside the different cards that you obtain, you also find equipable items which provide bonuses for certain card elements allowing for different character builds, and one thing that I thought was pretty cool about the game is its card upgrade system. You're able to meld two duplicate cards together which evolves the card increasing its stats and abilities, but at any point you can then unmeld the cards to gain back the lower level cards, and this really helps to avoid situations where you could end up with too many high cost cards. Now when it comes to the game's audio and visuals, I will say that I was a little put off by the visuals to start with. While the level of detail and the overall art direction is pretty decent, I found that some areas appeared to be overly bright with very little contrast between the light and dark elements, while others were oversaturated with extremely vibrant colours. You do eventually get used to the visuals, but it would only have required a little tweaking from the developers to fix these issues. Audio wise, the game sounds fine, it's got some decent sound effects and music, but in all honesty, there's really nothing that stands out about them. In all though, I enjoyed playing Cataclysm more than I first thought I would, and while things do get off to a bit of a slow start, gameplay does improve as new monster mechanics are introduced and you obtain a wider variety of cards. The game's easy to get into and its roguelite elements offer a more casual gameplay experience, but there is still enough complexity to keep things interesting, and there's a decent amount of challenge to be had in the later game. When it comes to my own personal rating of the game, I'm going to be giving Cataclysm Shards of the Four 3 out of 5 stars. If you're looking for a simple roguelike card battler to get you into the genre, then Cataclysm definitely fits the bill, but for something with more complexity which requires a little more strategy, then something like Neoverse or Slay the Spire will likely suit you better. And that just about does it for this review of Cataclysm Shards of the Four on the Nintendo Switch. Don't forget to hit that like button if it helped you out, let me know your thoughts and opinions on the game and share your favourite deck builders in the comments section below, and if you enjoy my content then consider subscribing to the channel. For now though, I just want to thank you all once again for watching, and until next time, take care of yourselves and game on.